Hello, thank you for watching our video how to. In this video, we will go over what you will find in the box and how to set up a pre configured Nitro router. This is a router you received from the Cisco Home and Remote Access Team. When you receive your router, please unpack the box and set it up as follows. You'll notice that you will find some instructions about how to set up the router. Should you have not had it pre-configured, you can ignore this. Uh, you will get some certification details that uh, are most lo mostly for licensing, so you can ignore that. You should get two Ethernet cables in the box. This cable, which is not needed, and a console cable, which you will need. You can set those to the side for right now. Some other paperwork that you don't need. You should find a power cord, a power supply, a mounting bracket should you have some sort of device on which you would mount the bracket to, whether it be your wall or a mounting rack or something like that. Um, it's, this is a beast of a power brick, but You'll note that it has the three-prong connector here, and then it has this connector here. Finally, here is the Nitro router itself in all of its glory. go. As you can see. So next we're going to set all this aside and we're going to show you how to set it up. Your router is pre-configured and so what you need to do is to set it up. Uh, to physically cable the router you need to set up your device power supply using the power brick that comes with it. This goes into this port right here. This is the power port. Notice how it has four box shaped with one that is slightly rounded on the bottom. That makes sure that it only fits in this port in one way. Notice that this is slightly rounded on the bottom. Also, this cable fits into this like so. Now I've already pre-configured and set up one power supply so that I didn't have to crawl under the desk while doing this tutorial. But as you can see, it's got the same connector. And so when I plug it in, it sits firmly in there. One thing that needs to note, you shouldn't jiggle it or wiggle it from side to side because that can break the power connector inside. You just need to connect it so that it snugly fits. You may hear that clicking sound that you heard a moment ago. And then you can turn the router on. You'll notice that the lights come on, all the lights came on, and then they went off, and then this light blinks, it's the OK light, it lets you know that the iOS, which is the operating system for these routers, is loading up. Now, this cable right here, conveniently labeled WAN, is the cable that's connected to my modem, which is in the other room. This cable that goes from your modem or from your home router or something like that connects to this port labeled 8 and GE WAN connected in and that gives you your internet connectivity. Now at this point your CVO is set up. Your CVO is ready to go. Um, you can just put it in your closet or on your desk whatever and it will it will go it will eventually have the VPN light will come on uh, we're going to talk about how to cable up for your phone and how to cable up for your computer so what you're going to do with these and we're going to talk about your phone to begin with your phone can connect via power over Ethernet so what you want to do is you want to untwist your cables Get the twist tie off.
one way that you'll know that your computer is or, or that your router is set up properly is you'll see that the GE8 is flashing. So anyways, as you'll notice, you have eight ports on the back. They're labeled zero through seven. These two, six and seven, are for your home internet access. They should be by default configured so that you can use them. If you wanted to put the CVO router directly connected to your modem, you can hook up your home modem behind this. Um, um, I, my apologies. You can hook up your home router behind this. Um, that said, there's this console port, which is what you would connect this blue cable to. Um, and we'll go over that in a few minutes. But you want to connect your computer to either port 0 or port 1 here. Um, and the reason for this is, as you notice, it says PoE here. That stands for Power Over Ethernet, and that allows you to get power to your phone. But you can really connect the computer to any that are 0 through 5. But you just want to make sure for standard cabling and troubleshooting that you're following some guide that the tech that asks you questions uh, would be familiar with. For that reason, we suggest zero or one. I'm going to connect my phone to zero. So as you notice, plug the cable in. And now you see there's, and it's a little dark in here, uh, to be able to see the ports. Let me see if I can get a flashlight so that I can show you a little bit better. So as you can see, there's the network and the computer port. Now the only one that we're concerned with at this point in time is this network port right here that I'm pointing to with the flashlight. That is the one that your phone should connect to in order to get power over Ethernet and to be able to turn on. The one for the computer is so that if you wanted to run your computer through this phone switch for some reason, like say you were in a limited Ethernet environment, then you could do that. There's no real reason with the Nitro router for you to do that other than you just want to. Um, as you notice, the phone now have, has power and you should see it boot up. And there you go. Um, I'm not sure that my VPN connection has reestablished, so we'll go over the lights in a few moments. The next thing I wanted to go over is just how to cable up for a PC or a Mac. So I'm going to take this twist tie off here and run this cable. And like I had said, it can, if you had two phones, you could put one phone here, one phone here, and one phone here. If you have a DX80, you can plug it in anywhere along this as the DX80 has its own power supply. Uh, one other thing about the phone before I start cabling up the computers, it is important that with the 802.1x authentication that comes with these devices, if you hook the phone up, you don't use an exterior power supply. Now that would be a power supply that plugs into this port right here. You don't want to use that power supply because it causes problems with the 802.1x authentication. So we're going to plug in, and I'm going to give you an example of a Windows laptop to begin with. So with a docking station, what you want to do is, on the Ethernet port on the back, plug it in. And then connect your laptop as so. Now, one thing that's important to note here, your laptop will also have an Ethernet jack somewhere on it. I rarely use mine. Uh, however, if you have a X1 Carbon or one of the other newer, uh, really thin laptops, you will not want to use um, the docking station. You may not have that option, my apologies. You may not have that option. Um, but what you'll, you'll have to end up doing is using the... Um, the 
the device's dongle, there'll be some sort of Ethernet or blue, um, or, or some sort of Thunderbolt dongle. Now, just to show you, my phone is registered, so my VPN connection has come up. Um, and let me show you. How to connect a, connect a Mac. So here's the Macintosh computer that I have here. And it's fairly simple. If you want to have a wired Ethernet connection, you have these dongles on the side, these Thunderbolt dongles that you can connect to. And then you just plug your computer in like so. Now these come pre-configured with 802.1x, so you have to make sure that you have 802.1x set up on the device. Now just to go over to show you what the lights do, we have several glowing lights here. Now this is for the wireless here, it's 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. This is for the WAN connection, and so the only WAN connection in your home network that you should have is for GE8. This right here is for the VPN connection. As you can see, it says VPN. If your light is faintly glowing for some reason, then that is probably not showing the VPN connection. It, should, it could be getting a ghost light from one of these other ones. It should be bright like this. Uh, sometimes in really bright light situations, it'll look a little bit washed out, uh, but it should be bright. It should be as bright as these other lights here. Uh, notice the OK light is on steady. The power light is on steady. Those are all self-check lights. And then you have your Ethernet connections. Notice these are labeled power over Ethernet. And the one that I have connected for my phone right now is zero and that it is lit up green. This is what you should see after the VPN connection has connected on the Nitro router. Again, just so that you can see what the back looks like, you should have a connection as such, and your lights should be as such. Now finally, let's talk about the console cable. The console cable is really used for troubleshooting or if you need to somehow get into the router to make some sort of configuration change, but the VPN will not come on. Now, it's important to note that the VPN light does not mean that you have data connectivity or IP phone connectivity. What it means is that there's a remote connection back to Cisco, um, and there are many reasons why you would not be able to get a data or phone connection, but still have a VPN connection. Uh, for instance, one of them is if your ISP was to block certain forms of VPN um, or you didn't have the correct settings on a device that is in front of the CVO. Uh, you, you, if you have a problem like that, you would definitely want to contact the support team. Now, this part of the cable is a serial connection. And if you notice, my Mac and my PC have nothing on it that would work as a serial connection. Now this on my PC is a VGA connection. This is not a serial connection. Very different. Notice they're both male connectors or female. I forget. I get that screwed up sometimes. But notice that they're both the same kind of connector. But what you actually need is something called a USB to serial connector. For you right here. And so it's going to look something like this as I drop it. It's going to have this on the end, which will plug into I'll have it backwards, the serial connector, like so. And then this end would go to your computer. Now, one important thing to note about this, Cisco IT does not provide these. Uh, so this may only come into play if you have one or know someone that has one of these serial to USB connectors. They do, they do have drivers that are specific to the platform, um, 
that, that they were made for. So if you have a Linux box or a Mac, one that works on a Windows machine may not work on your Linux box or your Mac. It's just an important thing to know, not necessarily going to affect much, uh, but you should check that if you decide that you want to purchase one of these in case something goes wrong. Uh, we don't suggest that you do that. Uh, th this is just an optional thing for you to do. Um, I think I got this off of Amazon for five bucks. I, I, I don't remember. It was, it was really cheap. Um, but so you have this, plug it in here, and that's your console connection. It says console on it right here, console. It's your console connection. Then you will connect the two together. And if you want a more secure connection, you screw these down. And then you would plug that into either a USB port on your laptop or a USB port on the back of your docking station. Now, uh, an important thing to note here is that you can leave this connected all the time if you have one of these. And so if for some reason you aren't able to get a VPN connection and you call support and you have one of the layer two uh, or tier two engineers um, on the line and they're able to help you, they want to do a WebEx or something like that to remote desktop into your computer, they can use this to be able to access the command line for this. Thank you for watching our video tutorial. I hope it's been helpful and we wish you all the best in your VPN usage.